How to find the value of pi using regular polygons. So first of all, what is pi? If we take a circle, the circumference of the circle is the distance all the way around the edge of the circle. The diameter is the length of the line from side to side passing through the centre of the circle. Pi is defined as the circumference divided by the diameter, which gives us this number here, 3.14 and so on. The decimal places of pi go on to infinity, they never repeat, we call it an irrational number. We would get the same number for pi regardless of what size the circle is. You could have a 1p coin, you could have the centre circle of a football pitch, you could have the Millennium Dome. If you took the circumference, divided it by the diameter, you would still get the same value of pi. But how can we work out what pi is? Where has this number come from? We're going to use a geometry method today. So let's consider a unit circle. So this is a circle with a radius, distance from the centre to the edge, of 1. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So for a unit circle, if the radius is 1, the area is going to be pi times 1 squared, which is just pi. So if we can find the area of this circle, we can find out what pi is. Consider this square around the edge of the circle. It is as wide as the circle is. So if the radius of the circle is 1, each side of the square must be 2. So the area of this square is 2 times 2, which is equal to 4. Now think about an inscribed square inside the circle. You can see the corners are just touching the edge of the circle. This one's a little bit trickier to work out the area of, as you can see that the 1 is now the measurement from the centre to a corner. But by inspection you can see that this little square is half the area of the large square. If you can't quite see this, imagine folding the corners of the large square over along fold lines based on the edges of the little square. So the area of the small square is half of the large one, which gives us an area of 2. Now you can see quite clearly that the area of the circle is bigger than the area of the small square, but smaller than the area of the large square, so pi must be in between 2 and 4. Now having a value of pi between 2 and 4 isn't particularly accurate, so let's try a polygon with more edges. Let's try a pentagon. So again, we're going to have a large pentagon on the outside and a small pentagon on the inside. If we can work out the areas of these, we'll hopefully get a more accurate number for the area of our circle. Now pentagons are a little bit trickier to work out the area of, so let's have a look at these separately. So here's our large pentagon. We can see that the value of 1 is the distance from the centre of the pentagon to the centre of the edge of the pentagon. Let's draw a line from the centre to a corner, creating a right angle triangle. Now you can see that we'd be able to fit 10 of those inside the pentagon, all identical. So the angle in the triangle must be 360 degrees divided by 10, which is 36 degrees. Using some trigonometry, we can now use the fact that the tan of 36 would be equal to the opposite over the adjacent to work out the opposite side, which I've labelled as x here. So tan of 36 equals x over 1, so x must be 0.727. Now the area of a right angle triangle is half times base times a height, so the area of this triangle will be a half times x. We can do 10 of them inside the pentagon, so the area of the pentagon must be 10 times a half times 1 times 0.727, giving us an area of 3.633. Now let's find the area of the small pentagon. So this time the 1 goes from the centre to a corner of the pentagon. Let's draw a similar line in from the centre to the next 
corner, which must also be the same length. This is a regular pentagon. Now the area of a triangle with two sides given can be found using a half sine AB sine theta, where theta is the angle in between the two sides A and B. Well, we can see that there are five of those triangles inside the pentagon. So that angle must be 72 degrees. So the area of the triangle must be a half times one times one times sine 72. So the area of the whole pentagon must be five lots of that, giving us an area of 2.378. So with our pentagons, we've got the large pentagon has an area of 3.633. The small pentagon has an area of 2.378, so pi must be in between 2.378 and 3.633. So this is more accurate than in between 2 and 4, but still a long way off being anything usable. So to find a more accurate version of pi, let's try some more sides. So working out for all of these would be very similar to what we did for the pentagon. So we're going to skip that and I'll just show you the results. So if you use regular hexagons, you would get a value of pi between 2.598 and 3.464. Still a long way off being accurate. Heptagons get you a little bit closer. Octagons a bit closer still. In fact, each time we use more sides, our value of pi gets closer and closer to the real value. But even with a decagon, 10 sides, we're still a long way off. So, to find pi, even just to one decimal place, we would need a 36 sided shape. That will give us pi equal to 3.1. To be more accurate still, and get to two decimal places, we would need a 56 sided shape. To get pi accurate to three decimal places, we would need 473 sides. For four decimal places, we would need 696 sides. And just to get a value of pi to five decimal places, we would need to use polygons with 2,099 sides. So this is obviously not the most effective method of finding a value for pi. There are far, far better algebraic versions but using geometry, this is quite a fun method.